Hello, everybody. Are we live? I've got no idea. This is a whole new system, so I don't know. Anyway, hello and welcome to the announcement of the People's Vote for uh, Birds of the World in the Pangolin Photo Challenge. My name is Toby German, and I want to welcome everybody here. I can see in the comments we've got people from, we've got England, lots of England. Oh, a big night tonight for England. Um, I'm predicting a score of 3-0 England. If you're an Englishman out there and you want to predict a score, put it in the comments down below. Um, and whilst you're at it, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and I hope this all goes well. This is very nerve wracking going live, but uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen today. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to answer some of the uh, frequently asked questions um, about the competition, a little bit of housekeeping, and then I'm going to go forwards into the announcement of the top five. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show the five images that got the most votes, starting at five and ending up with the winner. So uh, bear with me, it's gonna be lots of fun. I hope it lasts, let's uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, um, I'm just going to add this, right. Um, let me just get rid of, again, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm going to get rid of this little bit. So I'm just gonna use this new system. So birds of the world, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, okay, I just want to explain to you how the judging process works. Um, so what we did, we took all the images, there are about 750 images entered into the birds of the world. I then divided that equally amongst all the photo hosts and told them to go and choose their favorite 10 that they were putting forward to the next round. So we ended up with actually 78 images in total, which are currently being judged by the international photographers listed on the website. Uh, the message I've been getting back from them is like, wow, the caliber of images is extraordinary. So we're absolutely delighted with the quality and so are they. So this time next week, we're going to announce the winner. So again, I'll send out an email, make sure you're subscribed because you'll get notified as well. Uh, but I will make sure that you know uh, when we're going to do the announcement next. Right, totals on the donations. Wow, wow, wow. Here we go, I've got a little banner to show you this one. 350,000, that's 24,000 dollars, 17,000 uh, pounds, 32,000 Australian dollars if there's any Aussies here as well. This is amazing, it really is. It's about 30% of our annual um, operational budget for Pangolin Africa. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't made a donation, haven't joined in yet, I've put a link down below so you can join in the fund. Um, so we'll talk more about that later on. Right, next we have um, three challenges left. Right, so you all know that Birds of the World is now closed. Uh, there is black and white mammal behavior, creative captures to come. I'm going to make an announcement now about black and white, but don't forget if you haven't entered yet, you can still enter your image into Birds of the World because that will then be entered into the portfolio, which is the grand prize. And every single image you enter is also a ticket in the raffle to then go um, lie, uh, to win the big grand prize safari at the end of it as well. Okay, so. Moving on to the next bit of housekeeping, black and white update. I've had some really interesting emails, people asking, well, what can we take for black and white? Are we allowed to do other things? So I'm gonna send an email out again and we're going to broaden it. So it can be a black and white image of anything that involves nature and wildlife. So we're going to include plants, trees, natural landscapes. I don't want cityscapes. I don't want portraits of people, but we are going to broaden it. In fact, we're going to broaden it for creative captures as well. Mammal behavior is obviously subject matter has to be a mammal, but we're going to broaden it. But I'll send out an email. So make sure you are um, a part of the competition. Then you'll get emails all about this as well. Um, next thing, double entries. We know that some people were pointing out that we had double entries as well. Those were genuine mistakes by people. So I have been going through and uh, deleting the double entries. Often it was somebody uploaded, but then thought it wasn't uploaded. So that's what we're going to do. So I've been deleting the duplicates as well. But just remember, one image per challenge, okay? Um, I'm also going to put together a gallery of all 78 finalists who are here. So I'll be publishing that so you can see everybody who made it through to the round. And I'm going to publish that. I might even put it to some music, maybe make a video of it. So again, make sure you're subscribed here so that we can um, uh, do that. And you'll be able to see it here on YouTube and also on our website. Right. Lastly, I think it's EXIF data not displaying. 
Um, some people loaded their images and it wasn't displayed. This is because when you exported it from Lightroom or whichever um, editing software you're using, you have to select to export the EXIF data or the metadata with the JPEG. Otherwise, our system can't read it. So bear that in mind for the future. If you upload an image and it's not showing, go and re-export it from Lightroom or something like that. Um, finally, Pangolin Photo Academy, for all of the people who are entrants, you would have received your voucher to get 100% off and access to the Pangolin Photo Academy. So far, there are two talks up there, Villiers Stain talking about um, hide photography and also um, Alvera Cabarro from Costa Rica. I saw someone from Costa Rica now. Um, he has done um, an amazing video all about Costa Rica, and there's going to be loads more videos coming through. So if you're an entrant, you get free access to that. If you're not, there's a link down below to the academy. You can sign up um, and you can pay for entrance instead, and all the money is going to Pangolin Africa. So that's it. That's it for housekeeping, I think. Um, I'm going to get to the announcement. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to bring in a special guest. So yes, here we go. All the way from the Chobi, sitting almost behind me is Janine. Janine. Hello, Janine. Janine. Hey, guys. I'm so excited to see you all. Um, it is quite nerve-wracking to be live. I'm right here in the Chobi. All our guests are out on the beautiful Chobi River while I'm sitting here in our hotel. We've had guests again in June. It's been really exciting. The river is busy, beautiful elephant sightings. The animals are going wild and we're so excited to be back all here to hear who was the winners of the People's Choice Award. And we're gonna start with number five. Let's have a look. Number five is Matrishva Vyas with the beautiful colors of a peacock from India. How amazing is that? Quite a difficult shot to make up your mind about because now it is up to you to decide, do you want to choose a larger f-stop so you get the entire umbrella of the bird, every single feather in focus? Or would you prefer to shoot this on a lower f-stop, maybe an f4 or even an f2.8 to focus on one single feather only and maybe create a bit of a stronger bouquet instead. That is up to the photographer and the story he really wants to tell. Congratulations, Matricia. That is a beautiful image. And here we go to winner number four. That is Arub Dutta, also from India, with a stunning painted stork. By the way, we have the yellow gold storks nesting in the Chobi here at the moment as well. We visit them very often in the rapids, and they like to bring in greens and, and sticks to fix up their nests with the chicks. It is absolutely gorgeous. What I really prefer doing with photographing larger birds, in flight especially, is to choose a larger f-stop f8 and upwards to f10 f11 because we're talking about massive wingspans here and if you want to have the entire bird in focus all the way from one tip of the wing to the other it is easier if you shoot with a larger depth of field very well done Arup. and here we go to our next image number three that is sabrina colombo this time from south africa with a stunning cape white eye. Very, very cute little bird. And I love the way you made use of the negative space, Sabrina. The composition is beautiful with that calm, quiet background. And you give the bird enough space to look into the distance, the direction he wants to fly into, instead of boxing him in. That I really, really loved. Well done, Sabrina. All right, now we come to number two. And number two is Andri Stander, also from South Africa again, with a stunning white fronted bee eater. I believe you have even shot this shot on the Chobe River. We get the white fronted bee eaters nesting here. And it is so incredibly difficult to photograph a bird coming towards you and getting the focus right. And the focus is pin sharp on that bird, incredible. If you look at the wingtips, you can see even at 2,500 of a second, you see slight motion blur that just gives you an indication how fast this bird is. 
So incredibly well done. He looks like he's wearing a little skirt or a dress. The position is absolutely adorable. Congratulations to South Africa. And now we come to the final winner of the People's Choice. That will be Brains Monenque from Botswana of all places. How exciting is that? that our winner of the People's Choice Award is actually from Botswana. I'm so proud, I can't even say, with a stunning lilac-breasted roller down here. A bird that when he flies displays the beautiful light blue colors of the Botswana flag. A stunning bouquet. And this bird here, or this image really shows quite nicely how you have to be so careful to always include the tail of the animal as well, which brains you did very well, just, but it's right in there. Well done. Congratulations to Botswana brains. We can't wait to welcome you here. And with that, I hand you back over to Toby. So thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Janine. I can't believe it worked. Um, and I've just seen now we've got over 200 people watching, which is fantastic. So thank you all very much for joining us. Um, so before we go, I thought I would just share with you um, the results so you can see what happened. This is from the back end. Uh, these are all the votes that came through. So you can see it's all very legit um, and how we, uh, we pulled these results, which is fantastic. So yeah, so Brains, you are going to get a $1,000 Pangolin Photo Safari voucher to use and come and see us. Um, I'm going to reach out to Brains and see if I can get hold of him. And maybe he'd like to join us next week, which would be really cool as well. So uh, basically, that's it. Oh, I forgot to say, yes, he's also going to get a body warmer. That, that's worth more than a $1,000, surely. So guys, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure you're signed up. If you haven't started the Pangolin Photo Challenge yet, please join in, it's really good fun. Uh, from me and Janine and the Chobi, uh, we're gonna say goodbye and thank you very much for joining us today. We really, really, it's gone quite well. I hope it lasted, I hope we did it. But uh, if you wanna share it, it'll be on YouTube later on. So uh, thank you very much guys for, uh, for joining us. We really appreciate it and we hope you enjoy the rest of the challenge. Thank you. I Bye. hope to see you soon. Yes, go to Chobi, go to Chobi. Bye. Come, come this way. <laughs> <laughs>